And our top story, our Treasury Secretary's dream world. Now, yesterday in Dearborn, Michigan, Treasury Secretary Yellen described an American economic recovery that in no way reflects the views of most Americans. Here's a bit of what she said. Roll tape. Our plans worked. Due to the American Rescue Plan and our vaccination campaign, the United States experienced the fastest pace of job creation in our history. It's fair to say, by any traditional metric, we have experienced one of the quickest recoveries in our modern history. But the problem with that analysis, a recent Pew poll shows that just 13 percent now describe economic conditions as excellent or even just good. That is down from 28 percent in January. More than that, Yellen's speech focused on the administration's enormously costly green energy plan, what they call a, quote, transition as their primary economic concern. But climate change is not seen at all by Americans as a top economic problem. They are far more concerned about daily problems like inflation, the price and availab availability of fuel and food shortages. So what do Americans get that the administration doesn't? And who's got it right? For answers, we turn to Forbes media chairman Steve Forbes. Steve, great to see you. Thank you very much. Who's got it right, Steve? Be with you. Uh, the, the reality of the American people have it right. I think Janet Yellen is trying to do an economic <clears throat> version of Alice in Wonderland, where everything is turned upside down. You say something, that makes it true. She knows better. The people around in the administration on the economic side know better. But they think if they can spin these fantasies, these outright falsehoods, the American people, the American people say, oh, OK, things are bad, but they really <laughs> must be good. And I think it just shows more distrust of a government and government institutions. People know it's nonsense. Well, we see this kind of gaslighting on a lot of issues that Americans know better about, like the border, which they claim is is closed. Obviously, it's not like crime, which is running rampant in, in all the, the major cities, particularly the Democratic cities in America. And again, remember what they did with inflation. They tried to, to claim last summer that that, in fact, oh, it's cheaper to have a barbecue this year than it was last. I mean, it doesn't work. The American people don't buy it. And do they think that it will really work in the elections? Could it possibly uh, work in the elections, even though the polls show Americans don't buy it? Uh, the answer is no. If the Republicans do the right issues, uh, they're going to do very well in November. And uh, the American people know what the truth about the economy is. Uh, they know, and then gasoline. They'll say, oh, gasoline prices have come down. It's still far higher than when Joe Biden took office. And they neglect that the only reason gasoline prices have come down is because of slumping demand. That's right. And when Janet Yellen talks about the glorious economy, she neglects to mention they locked down the economy, threw millions of people out of work. So this is recovery from what was done uh, two and a half years ago. And so in terms of uh, the higher taxes coming and everything else, we're going to have storms coming, economic storms coming, not the serene picture she wants to paint. Now, even President Biden had to admit that, that this would be a, quote, painful transition that we're going through in order to get to, uh, to a green energy world. Uh, but the, it, it's so clearly a fact that, that, first of all, it's impossible to rally Americans towards hardship unless we're at, in World War II or something close to it, let alone in a country that's as divided on this issue as, as green energy is and a whole issue of climate change is. And Americans just don't think it's as important as prices going up. Well, the whole diagnosis of uh, climate change is absolutely false. And if they're worried about emissions, they should be pro natural gas. Even the Greens in Europe now see natural gas as a clean source of energy. And how about nuclear energy? That's a clean source. So this is, this is a, a fantasy stuff. And there's the physics are not there. The mining is right. not there. All the uh, stuff you need to make these batteries, thousand pound batteries for cars are not there. And what are you going to do about recycling all of these things in 20 years? They conveniently ignore that. That's There's no point. way you can do what they want to do. Well, a quick, and I, I, they've got to be called out on it. A quick and painful transition to an ineffective energy source when we have a very effective energy source in natural gas in, in particular, and, and we have plenty of it. I mean, it's just it absolutely has never made less sense than it does. They're, they're, we're all for a transition to, to cheaper and, and cleaner forms of energy. That's great. But but you have to have something in the midterm or you're going to absolutely kill the economy. 
And I think what's going to be happening in Europe this winter, where they were dependent on Russian natural gas when they didn't have to be because they went all out on these alternatives, uh, I think that's going to be a wake-up call politically that this whole experiment of the last 20 years where they spent $5 trillion in government spending and the like to go from 86% of the fossil fuels supplying world energy down to 84, two percentage points for $5 trillion, is going to be seen as a folly. It's going to have financial consequences. In Britain, you've got a disaster coming yeah. in terms of the economy. Uh, Germany, not far behind. So I think in next spring, there's going to be a profound change and how they see this whole climate issue and what you actually do about it. There are positive things that can be done, but the left doesn't want to hear it in this country. By the way, if you're looking for a little break in the clouds over Europe, we saw a little bit of it. I know they have this, this dumb idea of a price cap that they're going to subsidize energy prices, and that, that's not going to work. That's going to increase inflation, won't, won't bring it down at all. But Liz uh, Truss, the new prime minister, did suggest this week that, in fact, uh, they would be, uh, begin to explore new forms of fracking in the U.K. Maybe they'll go where we should be going now. That's right. And the Europe, uh, it's not only the U.K., Poland and other parts That's of right. Europe have ample amounts of natural gas. Italy, you know Italy the, the Italian uh, Italy. energy you know, company you know is pushing push. this. Yeah. You know what they should push? She should push in the U.K. You know why we do so well in the fracking and drilling in this country is because individuals own the mineral rights, not the government. So they're going to have intense opposition in England about not in my backyard. But I guarantee you, if you tell homeowners that if there's natural gas below their uh, property, they get royalties for it. That's right. I think you'll see a very changed environment. Do what the U.S. does on mineral rights. Yeah, absolutely. Well, by the way, The Wall Street Journal had a great piece this week. Uh, exploring the, the myth that, that is being put out by the Biden administration as to their, their claims that the, the leases are continuing to, to flow out of the administration, the oil and gas leases. In fact, we are down to levels. It's just coming out in a trickle. We're down to levels that we haven't seen since right after World War II with Harry Truman. That's right. When we had a much smaller economy, did not have the sophisticated technology for drilling and finding oil and gas that we have today. So uh, they say one thing, and it's just uh, so, so, so astonishing. They can do these blatant, big lie falsehoods and think the American people are going to fall for it. And it's up to Republicans and independents to say, we're calling you out. Uh, we want the truth. And the truth is, we have the energy here. Let's get it out. It'll be good for us and good for the world, the free world. By the way, everybody's talking about it now, but Senator Manchin's call to increase permitting, he claims it was, it was built into that so-called Anti-Inflation Act. Uh, now there's 70 members of Congress uh, that are threatening to, to shut down the government if, if they, it's not taken out of that bill. What, what do you think is going to happen there? Uh, I think <clears throat> he's going to suffer a double cross, and they're going to write the language in a way that is absolutely meaningless. That's why after the election, the Republicans get both houses. They should propose a clean, do these things faster bill, removing obstacles. There's no reason why it takes all these years. It can be done very, very quickly. And I think after this winter, especially with what could happen in Europe, there's going to be real political momentum. Let's re remove these artificial government imposed obstacles and do what we do best, which is be creative and productive and produce more not less. Yeah, this is going to be a very tough winter. I think people are, are girding their loins for that. The fact that it is prices are going to skyrocket. We're going to see shortages. There's going to be a lot of pain and misery. And I think that will lead to huge changes. Hopefully there will be some changes in November as well. We've got to leave it at that. Steve Forbes, good to see you, my friend. Appreciate it. Good to see you, David. Thank you.